yeah. SNP spokesperson Deirdre Brock. Thank yeah. you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and it's good to see the leader in her place. I'm glad to hear she's not too disappointed to find herself back here again, answering probing questions from the House. Like this one, Madam Deputy Speaker. If the new PM can claim yesterday a mandate to govern based on the Tory 2019 manifesto, why won't you recognise the even clearer mandate for an independence referendum, yeah, yeah. as laid out in multiple SNP manifestos and voted for by a clear majority of Scottish voters as legitimate? I look forward to the leader's answer. But, Madam Deputy Speaker, weren't there waves of relief from the Tory benches yesterday as they joyfully registered their jobs were possibly safe for a little while longer? Now, mind you, criticism has already begun about the new Prime Minister's choices and his judgment. Uh, it's been described by others far unkinder than me as a cabinet of retreads, and it doesn't point to a bright new future for this government. Most questionably, perhaps, we now have a Home Secretary who admitted breaking the ministerial code apparently multiple times and resigned over it just days ago, but she's been given a free pass back. Yes, an investigation is needed, but shouldn't this place provide a guide or pamphlet, a sort of how to be a Secretary of State or even Secretary of State for dummies for those chosen for these positions? Now, not to trivialise the Westminster psychodrama, but there is news that makes all this look like the proverbial storm in a teacup. The three main greenhouse gases were at their highest level ever in 2021, and the UK is not even halfway to meeting its climate targets in the 2030s and being net zero by 2050. Yet new licences for oil and gas exploration are being issued. We have a climate minister who seems to think that's good news for the environment, and the COP26 president has lost his position and influence at the cabinet table, although he's since demanded the PM explain how increased licensing dovetails with the UK's legally binding green commitments. Now, I hope the leader won't be tempted to refer to the lazy haverings of Scottish branch colleagues and accuse the SNP of not supporting oil and gas workers in the industry. After all, it's the Scottish Government that's committed £500 million to transitioning from reliance on fossil fuels to renewable energy, a commitment the UK Government has still to match. Just finally, the UN Secretary-General warns we're rapidly approaching the point of no return and prioritise climate or face catastrophe. Isn't it time this government took seriously the message scientists, academics, students and ordinary citizens are trying to tell us through their protests and all work together urgently to reach net zero and quite literally save our planet? Well, the Honourable Lady asks me uh, why uh, we don't uh, acknowledge the mandate to have uh, a referendum. It is because, as I say every week, we have had one. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, I long for the day when uh, honourable members opposite uh, will actually follow the democratic mandate uh, of, uh, of the people of Scotland. Uh, now it was a once in a generation vote. Now is not the time to be trying to have another one. People should be focused on the, the needs of the Scottish people, on improving education standards, getting people uh, access to health. But I know this is what I say uh, to the Honourable Lady every week, so let me give her another reason. Um, because we learned today that uh, uh, for there to be an independent Scotland in Europe, um, Scotland would have to join the Euro. Wow. And if she can tell us uh, how she intends to do that, uh, then I'll be happy to uh, take her question again.